Welcome to my performance review at 1080p resolution for the GeForce GTX Titan. This card is in a class of its own. It has over 2,500 CUDA cores overclocked, and we run all of our graphics benchmarks overclocked. We were able to run it consistently at well over 1.1 gigahertz, around 1.13 to 1.4 gigahertz with GPU boost. It features GPU boost 2.0, which basically amounts to more customizability in terms of the fan profiles, as well as the boost clocks of the card, and even overvolting options that we've never seen before. And I think you guys are going to be pretty impressed with the performance. This is based on the same Kepler architecture as the GK1. 14 or GTX 680, which was the previous ruler of the roost in terms of the NVIDIA stack, but this one comes in at a much higher performance level and a much higher price. It has 6 gigs of RAM, which probably won't benefit it much at 1080p, but you can check out my other videos at 2560 by 1600 as well as 5760 by 1080 in three-way surround in order to get some idea of what you think about the 6 gig frame buffer. Now, the contenders for this video, this is meant to be a heavyweight showdown. There are no, no mid-range graphic solutions included. So we've gone with 660 Ti SLI to show sort of what two better value but lower performance cards in SLI might be able to do. We've gone with a 7970, which is the best single GPU card from the AMD camp to go up against Nvidia's best single GPU card. However, they're in very different price ranges. We've got a GTX 680, which is Nvidia's previous top, top of the line single card and to represent dual 7970s, since we did take two lower end GPUs from NVIDIA and run them in SLI, we have an ASUS Ares 2. So this is two 7970 gigahertz edition GPUs. This one's pretty expensive, but the results should be pretty close to what you'd get with two normal cards as well. So let's start with our first game, which is Crisis. The old joke, can it run Crisis? The answer is yes. Yes, indeed it can. The GeForce GTX Titan destroys Crisis. It beats the Ares 2, which is priced about $500 higher for an actual Ares 2, or pretty similarly if you buy a couple 7970s. It beats 660 Ti SLI and leaves the 7970 and the 680, the other only single GPU solutions, in the dust. Crisis 3 obviously just launched, so this is another one. Ha ha ha, can it, but, right, but can it run Crisis 3? The answer is once again, yes it can. The only solution that beats out the GTX Titan in Crisis 3 is the GTX 660 Ti SLI solution. So it beats the 680 by a handy 25 to 30%, beats the Ares 2 handily and the 7970. You can see here the Ares 2 didn't scale very well in Crisis 3, probably not optimized yet for dual GPU on AMD, it wasn't much faster than a single 7970. Moving right along, Far Cry 3, another popular title that's actually pretty new as well. And something you might notice about all these graphs is we've labeled what settings we're running at, so you can reproduce the results if you want. And we've gone with higher settings than we normally do because this is a heavyweight battle. So the Titan comes out on top again in Far Cry 3, beating out the Ares 2, the 7970, 660 Ti SLI really didn't fare very well in Far Cry 3, barely scaling at all, and just edging out the GTX 680, which comes in at the bottom of the heap for this particular uh, game. Skyrim. Now Skyrim we're doing things quite a bit differently. In the past we've run a bone stock Skyrim with just the high res texture pack. That's gone completely out the window. We are running 18 mods from the Steam Workshop and Slick's going to be creating a Skyrim benchmarking guide hopefully sometime in the next couple weeks so you guys can check out how we run Skyrim exactly because it gives it, it makes it much more demanding and gives it more of a, more of a PC like uh, well, it makes it so there's a point having a high-end graphics card to run it. Gives you more of a PC gaming experience rather than dumbed down console graphics. Lots of trees, better textures on everything, looks absolutely fantastic. So the Titan comes out on top in Skyrim and uh, the Ares 2 is only beat by the Titan. Then the single GPU solutions fall a little bit down and GTX 660 Ti SLI really didn't scale that much from 680. Well, the thing that I do notice here is that we still don't see maybe as much performance difference in Skyrim as we could if we added even more mods. So by the time we do our performance guide, it's possible we'll have changed this. 
Battlefield 3 is getting to be a bit of an older title, but it's still very graphically demanding. AMD Crossfire X scales incredibly well in this game. So you can see the Ares 2 actually performs about double as well as a 7970. It's so rare to see perfect Crossfire scaling. Then the Titan performs similarly to a 660 Ti SLI. So this is where that discussion about do you want a single GPU or do you want a dual GPU solution really comes to, comes to a head because Dual GPU solutions like this, where the Ares 2 just destroys everything else, look pretty compelling. Grab a couple of these, you're going to get the best possible gaming experience in Battlefield 3, hands down. However, the Titan, because it's a single GPU, is consistent across the board. It consistently performs better than the 680 and the 7970 single GPUs, whereas sometimes those dual graphics card solutions perform the same or just a little bit better, and sometimes they leave the single GPUs in the dust. Our last two games are Metro 2033, which is also an older title, but does continue to scale well, which did incredibly well in Crossfire again, with the Ares 2 leaving everything behind. The Titan still beats out the 660 Ti and destroys the GTX 680. This seems to be more of an AMD favoring title, uh, in spite of the, the way it's meant to be played, branding on the title, but you see that happen from time to time. Witcher 2 is our last one. We're using the Ultra preset, including Uber Sampling. Now, one of the things that made Uber Sampling unappealing in the past was the fact that it was extremely demanding on the graphics card memory at a time when most graphics cards were shipping with one to one and a half gigs of VRAM. Not a big deal anymore. Six gigs of RAM, you can run Witcher 2 at ultra presets at pretty much whatever resolution you want. That's what makes the Titan ready for not only current generation games, but future generation games and future resolutions. Even surround was no big deal in terms of the memory usage on the GTX Titan. So that pretty much wraps it up in terms of 1080p performance. The conclusion is pretty simple. If you're looking for the best possible performance from a single GPU card, then go for it. However, it's not cheap. And unlike what you're going to see in our other performance review at 2560 by 1600, the Titan doesn't really stretch its legs until you get to those higher resolutions. With that said, we did run the games at more demanding settings than we usually do with lower end cards in order to show you that even at 1080p, the Titan does distance itself from other single GPU solutions. Thank you for checking out this video review on Linus Tech Tips. Don't forget to subscribe for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.